Bomb. Jersey Baseball Show today, we are taking a look at Generation Next, Volume 2.0. We are uh, bigger and better than ever here as far as number of guys we're featuring. We are certainly happy to uh, bring today's edition to you, Ryan Jaros, Cranford High School, uh, number one ranked player in the uh, 2023 class. So he's a junior. He's got a little bit of time left, but uh, certainly very happy to have you uh Come join us for a little bit today on the show. Welcome, Ryan. Have a uh, hope that things are going well. Of course. Thank you so much, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Let's uh, kind of start you off the same way as as everybody else. I think we can see where you've uh, made the commitment to uh, to school here. Um, somebody from the marketing department down there got to you <laughs> and said, "Rest school as as well as we can." And uh, you know, certainly headed down to uh, to Atlanta and Georgia Tech and one of the great schools in the country in the ACC and Power Five baseball. And so congratulations, first of all. Thank but, you so much. Yeah. Tell us how that journey went and how they, you know, what what ended up getting your, you know, your heart set on uh, playing ball in Georgia at Georgia Tech. Yeah, totally. Um, right off the bat, my recruiting story is way different than anyone else's. I um, it first started in, co in the COVID year. So it was totally different. I had to like send video. No one was out seeing anyone. So that was totally a, a big, big difference. And um, I couldn't see any campuses. I wasn't traveling at all. I was stuck at home. So, but um, the connection me and uh, Coach Ramsey, James Ramsey had right off the bat, it was unlike any other coach I talked to. He was the man. He always like made it seem like he put me forward and uh, I couldn't ask for much more. Um, and then there also are two Union County players down there. They actually ended up starting as freshmen, so that uh, gives me uh, some hope. And uh, honestly, it was just a great opportunity. I knew I was going to be able to go down there and compete uh, the best that I was going to play, and uh, I'm hoping that could be me one day. Yeah, for sure. And 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 you're playing, you know, certainly in depending on who you ask, the best or the second best conference in the country. You know, you're certainly mm -hmm. playing great baseball every every day. Um, yeah always I, I'm sure you felt that kind of iron sharpens iron and it's going to make you or get you to where your your vision and your dream is totally yeah that was a big part of it and uh honestly the, the difference between ACC and SEC was the academics me and my family take a big pride in that and um Georgia Tech it was it was the best of the best for both baseball and schooling so I couldn't really pass up on that yeah you got you know the the I guess really the big three Duke Virginia Georgia Tech when it comes to that and totally. but every other school is still, you know, you. I don't want to slight UNC. You don't want to slight, you know, uh, Boston College is a great school. It's it it it, it it's just so many. It, it's it's cool that you found a fit there, and 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 you know, obviously, uh, certainly something that you were very excited to do. And and now it's, I guess, the goal is making sure you're ready to be there on uh, day one. Totally, of course, yeah. It's a big relief off your chest, finally knowing that you're going to be a D1 baseball player. But honestly, the work just gets harder. Just got to keep working hard and uh, keep grinding for day one when you get there. For sure. Now, you were with the the Diamond Jacks program for a lot of your your growing up. You know, not necessarily in the little field, but as as you made the move up to the big field. Um, what did that program mean to you? Not just your baseball development. But your development is some of with some of the uh, the friends and the guys that you met and played with on on the way up. Of course, I still think that was the best decision I ever made playing baseball. I was just uh, playing on my travel team, the town team in Cranford, and uh, making that move to the Diamond Jacks. It was phenomenal. It was hands down like one of the best complex complexes in uh, Jersey. Best coaching staff and being able to meet all those players that I'm still best friends with today. It's something I I would never trade. Yeah, and and um, you know, now we've got Cranford. We've got a a team with certainly a shot to win a state title. Um, That's great the goal. Junior, 
great junior class, right? Um, give us a, a couple shout outs to some of your guys there on your team in high school, but give us also sort of a preview of, of what you're looking for this year. Um, you know, not just up in, uh, in Union County, but also when we get beyond. Of course. Um, so we're actually having eight, eight of the nine position players coming back and uh, we're very excited for that, but we're actually losing three of our top dogs. So it's going to be tough. We're going to have to make an adjustment, but we lost Robbie Salvador. He's a left-handed pitcher. He's going to Brookdale. He's been overlooked his whole life. I really think that kid will make it one day. He's a stud. Um, another kid going to Brookdale is Marcus Johnson. He's the center fielder. And then we have uh, Joe Correa, who was actually on the fall team for UConn. So that's a, he was a pitcher. Marcus was a center fielder and Robbie was a pitcher. So we're losing two of our top dogs for pitching, but um, coming back, we got, I think our whole infield's committed. Um, the catcher, Luca Lemire, he's a stud too. We got Will Gallagher that can play short, end pitch, Shea Grady at second, Tony Silva at first going to Colby College, and uh, Shea, Shea's going to Bryant, Will's going to Ryder, and then the outfield. We got another junior, his name's um, Jay Carter. He'll track down any ball. In right field, we have uh, Shane Van Dam. I, he has a power arm, power bat. And then, uh, honestly, I'm just super excited to get back out there. High school ball is nothing you could trade. Being able to, like you, it's it's so hard to describe because that season, it's like you're not hanging out with anyone else. It's just the baseball kids every day, and there's nothing better than that. And it's guys you played with for so long, and for in most cases too. Right? Oh, of course, growing up with those guys, I I was playing baseball with half of them since I was eight. So, I mean, when I won that state championship, it was a little bit different because it was with my brother's friends who I grew up watching because they were seniors and I was a freshman. But um, if I could win it with these kids, like my best friends growing up that would be amazing. So just working every day to achieve that dream. Yeah. Now what, uh, so did you take an extra year then with, with COVID to, to push back into 2023 or, or, or. I actually didn't now my birthday's always, my birthday is December 27, 2004. So I'm still 16. So, um, yeah, I actually didn't, uh, maybe I was thinking about it a little bit, but not much. I. Uh, I have like a really good group of friends that I love being with. So it didn't really cross my mind too much. Yeah. And, and no need either. I was going to say it's a, uh, it's like, you, you know, I don't know how you're going to do much better than ACC ball. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. So you've got another year then I guess of, of diamond Jacks left. Is that, uh, or are you, uh, you know, going to do more like kind of a national or a showcase sort of thing, or what's the, what's the plan for next summer? Yeah, so it was it was actually tough. Last fall, I played for the Diamond Jacks. Then I, uh, me and my family made the move to go to the Canes national team, and mm -hmm. it was a tough decision. I loved all those guys at Diamond Nation, but I thought it would be best for me to get on that national level, face the best competition to get. So when right. I'm ready to go down there for Georgia Tech, so it was a tough decision. I still love all those guys, but I ended up making the move, and uh, I haven't looked back. This summer was a great opportunity to get out, get out in front of a lot of people, get my name out there, and uh, honestly, just grow as a better baseball player in person meeting a lot of new people. I think the biggest thing this uh, summer was when you're playing with a bunch of kids that know the game, you get to pick everyone's brain. And that's the best part. You just grow so much just from like asking people questions. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the favorite place you got to play then at this point? There's nothing like going down to West Palm, seeing the palm trees, playing, playing in the minor league spring training stadiums. Oof. Uh, not the minor league spring training, the spring training stadiums. That's right, awesome. Right. Yeah, it makes you appreciate just the being out there too, right? It just gives you a greater appreciation for all these opportunities, I would think. Of course, totally. Just being able to play the game, the game everyone loves. Yep, yep. So um, coming up this next summer is, is you know, area code tryouts, things like that. Or is that going to be on your uh, agenda or your wish list to try to knock them off? Of course. So um, this summer – I'm actually going to play with the Canes again. We only have three tournaments. And then August, pretty much, uh, I know there's East Coast Pro, area codes. Um, there's the USA. So there's a lot. There's a lot I'm going to try to, just going to try to do my best and grind it out this summer and hopefully make a name for myself to be in those events. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think you need to focus on most at this point? I mean, when you go into, and, and again, it's, it's a little different than, than asking this to some guys because they're, they're seniors. And yes. they're a little bit closer to starting their college journey. But, you know, as far as putting together your plan, um, you know, what are the, the main focuses that you want to, uh, to, to, to check off this, uh, this offseason? 
Totally. I know last season, my biggest thing was speed. And then I ended up actually achieving it this summer. I, uh, I ran a six, six at the junior national showcase. So I was, I was, I couldn't believe it, but, um, so last year I would say speed this year, it's pretty much just consistency, just being able to pepper the gaps, hit some home runs, hit, the, hit more power. This summer I actually ended up doing pretty well swinging it, but there was not, not enough power and me playing third, I got to be able to drive that ball out of the yard. So I've been working a lot on that, trying to use my legs, trying to get really strong. So it's been, it's been a helping out so far and I'm hoping to see some results in the spring. Now you said six, six, how big are you now? I'm um, six, three, about two twenty. Yeah. So that's, it's a pretty, you sure they never try to get you to play football up at Cranford? <laughs> they do. I yeah. love all those guys, but, uh, I don't know. I just never, I would never be able to look at myself if I ever got injured. No, no. It just seems like that, that math adds up into like a crazy weapon, especially in, <laughs> especially in high school, just running over and running by guys. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when you, when you say not enough power, you, you're saying doubles got to turn to home runs. You're not saying like uh, little balls over the same, you know, the shortstop's head have got to go to the wall here. We're, we're talking about gap power to, to home run power, right? Yes, yes. More the doubles turning into homers, you know. I think this high school season I had like 10 balls that one hop the fence. So I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to lift some more weight to get it over. We're checking those baseballs, make sure they're not dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Um, but that's you know, that's good. I think it's it's good to have that vision of where you want to be, obviously, too, right? Totally, yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is for me, I have three goals I write down every off season, if not more. And I look at them every day, just try to achieve everything. What's the biggest, what, uh, what's one kind of like, I don't know, piece of advice, quote, you know, something like that, that you picked up along the way that, that really has stuck with you and, and kind of make you the person who you want to be? Of course. Um, I think the biggest thing, every single time I step on the field, I always try to, try to give it my all because you never know who's someone who's watching you. I, always, I remember I was watching Kobe Bryant once and he was like, if I'm going to take a game off, like that could be someone's first game seeing me. That's the way I try to think every single time I get on the field, it could be someone's first time uh, watching me. And I want to, I want to show them the player I am and the person I am. For sure. Now, now obviously a lot of time on the field and at the field, what's your favorite things to do away from the field? Honestly, just any normal kid, hang out with my friends, spend time with family. Um, I don't have any crazy ho hobbies. I can't do I can't do a backflip, uh, so it's not gonna be as entertaining as the last um, last interview. But right, it's but right. yeah, what good are you? I only talk to guys who can do backflips. <laughs> nah. <laughs> then again, you're you're six three two twenty. I don't know if that that done anyway. That's all right. <laughs> well, I'll have to start trying. Yeah, that's all right. You get, see, now you got four off season goals. You got to work. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um. Favorite subjects in school? Mine, totally math. I'm a math guru. I, I think I want to do finance in college and uh, enter the business field. So that's, I think that's totally my path. Should have known based on your school choice, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's not, Georgia Tech is not a tiny liberal arts school or anything like that. It's got the name Tech in the, in the name. It, it's, yeah, it's um, math or any, like engineering or just kind of like you said, finance. Just finance. I, I would love to maybe dabble in engineering, but it's pretty hard to do baseball and engineering. I heard down there. But, but finance is good because then you can be your own agent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, music to listen to pregame. So my favorite song of all time is uh, What's My Age Again by Blink, Blink 182. So it's a little bit of a throwback, but I listen to it before every game. I listen to that a little bit of 50 Cent and uh, it just gets me in in uh, go mode. I love when nothing makes you feel older than when somebody calls something a throwback and you remember <laughs> when it came out in the first place. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you so much. My, I'm sorry. My fault. That's all right. Um, Pre-game or a favorite game day meal? Game day meal. There's nothing like a Saturday morning game coming downstairs with some eggs for my mom. Um, so is, your, that... your, is your mom the cook in the family? Uh, actually, both of them cook a lot, so okay. I'm thankful for that. Both of them could cook, but actually, last before every game, um, last season for high school, we'd go to the deli in uh in town. It was called Mr. J's. And what was what was our uh, favorite order there? 
I would get the big Will. It's after it's actually named after um Will Fries. He's a offensive lineman for the Colts that came out of Cranford. And uh it was like chicken tenders, uh lettuce, tomato, and it had some, I think some sauce on it, but it was really good. So you're eating a sandwich named after a lineman. That means you're pretty thin. <laughs> yes. Trying right. to be. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> Try to be right. Yeah. Um I guess we'll still go with this. It's not too far away past Halloween, but favorite Halloween costume growing up? Costume growing up? Oh, that's a tough one. I think it was Spider-Man. I, I got to throw that in there for the new movie coming out soon. I'm that's super right. excited. That's right. Now we're going to hit you with the real tough one, and it's probably my favorite question that I've been asking people now. Okay. Um, if, everyday sport, if everyday activities were Olympic sports, what would you be getting a gold medal in? Oh, that is a tough one. I'm trying mm -hmm. to. Uh, I think, I think it would have to be that. Th um, what is it? The throwing one, where you like go around, and you throw, throw the ball. <laughs> I don't know what it's called though. Maybe right. that. Um, maybe high jump. I could actually jump pretty high. I used to really? play basketball. Yeah, I used to be. I used to play basketball. I started dunking in like seventh grade. <sighs> of course, yeah. you started dunking in seventh grade. What <laughs> when did you stop playing? I stopped playing my freshman year. Did I played you actually fresh, play I, as a freshman, or did yes, you? I played. I played my freshman year. I uh, I played on JV and I played a little bit on varsity, but um, it just went right into the baseball season. I didn't find myself like having enough energy to go do basketball and baseball. My body was so run down, and ultimately, I lost so much weight from basketball. I ended yeah. up losing like fifteen pounds, and going right into the season like that, it was just not not worth the risk. No, and then when, once you've already made that commitment to uh, the major D1 life, you know, you're 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 not making that choice because that's as far as you want to go either. Right. I mean, you exactly, want to. Yes. So you don't want to yeah. be like having to, you know, get to March and you're making up ground that you lost from December to February and try to make up ground while it's in baseball season. You know, it's like it just seems like it's a it's a tough cycle to 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 beat to get to where you want. Totally. Maybe football because you have those three months and then baseball season, right. but but right. basketball was definitely tough. Um, favorite pro uh, team? Doesn't matter what sport. The Mets. I'm a diehard Mets fan. I'm uh, so happy with their. Somebody's happy today. Well, not today. It was a lockout yeah. happening, but but somebody's this, this whole past weekend, man. I couldn't contain my smile. <laughs> of course. And as a Phillies fan, I I, I don't like it even a little uh, bit. Yeah, but you know, let's let's hope let's hope there is a 2022 season for all this to happen, right? Because that that might be typical Mets for them to jack up like that, and then all of a sudden there's no season. I know, of course. You, know, you got all the Met, something a Mets fan would have to uh, feel that pain. That's why uh, you get all these presents. You want to be able to open them and 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 see them in action. You know. Yes. Um, hopefully the hopefully the best one-two punch in baseball. We'll see yeah. if they stay healthy. Yeah, that's another that's another thing. Yeah. I don't want to go there. I don't want to wish that on anybody. Uh, of course. Um, favorite Met of all time. David Wright. He's he inspired me. Third baseman, everything. Yeah, yeah I, I told you I saw I see Scott Rowland vibes when I watch your highlights, but I, I think that that probably makes sense. I should have gone David Wright vibes, right? That's yes. Once you said that, I uh I figured you were a uh, Phillies fan. And and older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's uh that's great if uh if you could be if baseball was out of the question and you could be d1 in any other sport what one would it be it would have to be football i i, I was just playing a pickup game last weekend with all my friends and i would love to be a tight end or like a wide receiver or something. i knew i knew you still played football somehow it's, it's, it's yes. too, too much physical talent there to not use <laughs> And so you probably picked pretty early then in those pickup games. <laughs> yes, it was actually my friend group against one of our, our other friends friend group. So it was it was a ton of fun. We ended up playing like a seven on seven. Get get Ryan the ball and move out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I told him just lob it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. With your six three and your your you know, whatever vertical, sure. Good luck for yeah. somebody like me to try to stop that. <laughs> um you said favorite subject already. Yeah. Um, what's one thing that we don't know about Ryan Jaros? One thing that we don't know about me. Um, 
it would have to be I, I i love music like i i i'm always listening to music and it's always, pretty much always like green day uh blink all those old bands um the goo goo Do- uh the goo goo dolls yeah um the red hot chili peppers i love all those guys that's a pretty good vibe to have too totally yeah i i'll dabble in some rap here and there but it has to be the right occasion for sure uh Proudest moment, favorite moment uh, ever on the baseball field? It had to be winning the state championship with my brother my freshman year. That was, it was something special. I still, still think about that feeling and getting, getting rings and everything, winning it with everyone. It was like my freshman year. So it was, uh, it was all I knew at the time, you know? Definitely. Now that was the last dance? Yes. So that was pretty cool, right? Because that's, I mean, not that, Winning a regular state title is, is cool or not, but it was just guys from all different types of schools too, right? There was no group one, group two, group three, mm-hmm. right? It's just kind of everything thrown together. Yes. I mean, we were the 13th seed going in it, so I, no one really expected us to beat like a, a team like Don Bosco or, or yeah. uh, Bergen Catholic. But being able to play those guys and like challenging ourselves, it was a ton of fun. And that's when I think we gained the most confidence, knowing we could hang with those big teams. So now that we've got the, uh, the the black and gold there up, the, uh, Georgia Tech, what's our least favorite ACC school now? <laughs> least favorite ACC school? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, I don't wish I, – I know, really. I don't wish bad on anyone, but um, I'm trying to think. I don't know, man. I think my least favorite school is probably Georgia, and that's SEC, right. though. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's, that's yeah. actually the, probably the best answer you could give for anybody watching. Yeah. Yes. Ryan, we appreciate you taking a few moments here with us today. Certainly best of luck through high school here. Um, we can't wait to see what you do at Georgia Tech and, and hopefully beyond. And uh, I know this won't be the last time we, we ask to have you on, but, uh, you know, certainly good first showing. And, and, and we'll work on a couple of those questions and find some non-Mets answers for you in the future. <laughs> of course. Thanks so much, Mike. I had a, it was a pleasure talking. Absolutely. Ryan Jarrett our guest today, Jersey Baseball Show, our Generation Next 2.0 series, bigger and better, and Ryan is certainly bigger. Uh, <laughs> see what we get out of him this year, but I uh, appreciate everybody watching and look forward to, uh, to seeing you next time.